welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where today we're going to be entering into our world of magic as we continue our process of painting up the playing pieces from Hero Quest. <laughs> today we're going to be painting up the goblins. Now these guys might be small, but they've got some big attitude. With that jutting lower jaw and a seemingly confident smirk, they've got some real character to them, making them one of my favourites. Now individually they might be pretty weak, but with enough of them, they're a real threat. I'm going to be painting these up using a number of different brands. I'm going to be using enamels from Humbro, but also acrylics from Revel and from Citadel. Now, although I've started using Citadel paints a lot more, most of the paints that I have in my stock are from Humbro and Revel because I've got a hobby craft close to me and they don't stock any Citadel paints. So I'm going to be using a bit of a mishmash of all different ranges, but it doesn't really matter. We're still gonna get the same kind of effect and hopefully they're gonna look good. So without further ado, let's get painting. So I'm starting off with a leaf green here as the base coat and you can see I've not actually put any primer on this model. And the reason for that is, well, it's a dark green plastic. So I don't really see the point of putting a primer on this and it, I don't actually tend to put primer on a lot of models. I don't really find that it's necessary unless you're going to really abuse them. This paint is uh, rather too thin, but I will thicken that up by adding more actual paint to it. After another coat of that leaf green, it's then time to add some Auruk flesh. And for this, I'm just dry brushing this on. So obviously there's very little paint on my paintbrush, having brushed most of it off onto some newspaper. And I'm just going over the highlights in order to pick out those raised areas. And this is a really nice kind of goblin quite bright green, I quite like this one. With the basic skin tones down, it's then time to move on to a bit of detail. And I'm starting on the boots, and for this I'm using this leather brown. This really dark brown from Revel is my go-to for the base coats when I'm doing browns. I really, really like this. It's a nice, dark, rich color. So I'm painting that onto the boots, and when those are done, I'm then also using it on the belt. You can see it's really useful to turn things round, turn them upside down, any angle that's going to help you get in there and paint without getting that brown paint onto the skin where you don't want it. I'm then going to use some metal coat polished steel on the axe head and if you've seen any of my other painting videos you'll know that I absolutely love this stuff. It dries really matte but it's a good dark colour and once it's dry because of the metal pigment in it you can actually use a soft cloth and rub it back and forth and actually buff it up to this really nice shine. Of course, being a dungeon dwelling goblin, I don't really want it to look new, so I'm going to use some of this polished aluminium and dry brush it on. This does make it shinier and brighter, but it also makes it look more used and a bit more rusty and dinged up. Once the dry brushing's done and no more is going to get onto the axe shaft, it's time to then paint that in again with that really nice dark leather brown. It's nice for leathers on boots, but it's also good as a base for wood. I really like this colour. Shaft painted and it's time for a bit more detail. Using some brass scorpion here just on the very end of this axe. And then I'm also going to use it to add a little bit more detail onto the actual rivet of the axe head just to add a bit more detail and to make it a bit more eye-catching. It's then on to the belt buckle, which is probably the finest detail, apart from the eyes, on this model. So I'm using a really, really fine-tipped brush with this polished aluminium, which has got a nice flow. And I find that this goes on really well, but I do find it best to paint this on before the colour of the tunic, because it is quite hard to get under that overhanging cloth without it spilling over. It's time now for the tunic, and this is where you can put some differentiation into your goblins so that you don't have your whole horde of goblins looking exactly the same when they're on the board. You can obviously use any kind of colour. I'm going for yellow for this particular one. This Revel Sand is a really nice, deep, mustardy yellow colour, so I really quite like it. But I've also got goblins in red, in brown, in blue, in purple, I've even got one in pink, 
and uh, it just breaks up the board so that it doesn't just look like a single hoard that's all the same. I'm using the orc card as inspiration for this guy, although I know the goblin card is a brownish red. Painting the tunic is perhaps where you're going to want to be most careful on this guy because there's a lot of edges of this tunic which are overlapping pre-painted areas. You don't have a lot of give to get paint onto areas which you can then just paint over the top of. So take your time and really make sure that you uh, are precise with this. With the corner bits here I will also use a smaller brush. I want to add a bit more detail to the boots so I'm using this brown here from Revel and just dry brushing that over picking out the highlights. Once I've done that and that's dry I'm then going to go over that very lightly with this beige in order to just make it really pop. Now at this point you can then really take your time and add individual lines of dark colour into the recesses of the yellow and highlights but as this guy lives in a dungeon and is going to be really dingy and I'm painting a whole army of them I'm really wanting to speed up the process so I'm just using this Agrax Earthshade as a wash and getting it all over him, his skin, his tunic, his metal axe absolutely everything and as you can see that really really picks out the deep crevices and colours them and on this yellow it really makes it stand out. And while it has really added good depth to that yellow it dampens down and dulls the skin quite a lot so I'm using the original Auric flesh and going back over the skin dry brushing just over those highlighted areas just to add that greenness back in and to make it far more vivid and much more goblin like. And while that does look much better for me personally it didn't quite have the saturation of green that I wanted so I'm using this Elysian green and dry brushing this over the top because it really has that brightness to it that yellow tone that really stands out. Time for a really finely tipped brush now in order to add some scarlet to the eyes and even though this brush is really thin you can see that actually some of that scarlet is getting onto the skin but that's okay you just need to make sure you go back with some of that skin colour and go round it again and touch it up just to make it neat. Now I really want these eyes to gain people's attention and to be a real focus point when people are playing this game or see this character so I'm using some of this sunset just to add a tiny tiny dot which makes the eyes have a real blazing quality and it's going to make this goblin look really malevolent. I want to grunge up this axe now make it look like it's really been used for chopping flesh so I'm stippling on a thin glaze of this purple red once that's dry I'm then going to use non-watered down version to stipple that on to get some more clotted blood on there. Now technically that's all the sculpted detail painted now but to add a bit more individuality to my goblins I like to give them teeth. I really really love this underbite it gives so much personality and you can really bring that out more by adding teeth in as well and by giving each goblin different numbers of teeth and different teeth placements you can really make them individual paint over any overspill on the lip and then it's time to go on to doing the base. For all of my Hero Quest minis I'm using polished steel for the base because it gives this really nice luster and shine to it when it's finished. Painting that on and once that's been painted on straight I'm then going to stipple it on when it starts to dry and clump and you can get some really nice texture on the base by doing that. When it's dry and you get to the point of actually buffing it up, it's really nice because the natural high points buff up to a high shine and the lower points don't, so you get this really nice finish on it. I just really like the shine on this and the depth, it's got this really nice depth and luster to it. it, gives some nice interest but without being too over the top that it actually takes away or detracts from the goblin himself. And with painting done it's now time to add this yellow clad goblin to the goblin horde and you can see I've got lots of different colours of tunics in here and you might also notice that there's different numbers and placement of teeth just to vary them up 
make them look a bit different apart from the weapons as well. I absolutely love the goblins. So much character in these little guys. So I hope you find that useful. If you'd like to tell us how you get on with painting, please leave a message in the comments below. Or if you've got any of your own tips or tricks that you'd like to share, please get in touch. Please remember to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed what you've seen here. And there's going to be plenty more of this coming up. Until next time though, this is Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.